Hey guys, what's up? We got the map video today. I'm working on it, got it done. I would be outside, but it's 21 outside. Well, it might not even be 21 yet. It's like it got done at 11 last night. So I don't know what, it's cold. So I'm not going outside to do this. It doesn't matter. We don't need to go outside. I got a map on my phone. I think we can do this. I want you all to think a little bit about maps. I, I bring up the map situation because I think the map has been a very... Um, been one of the most useful tools ever in fishing, like phenomenal. It's great if you use it the right way. And, and I, I guess what I want to do is I want to show you all what I think, how you should use the map. And then you, I think a lot of times we're wasting time, not with the map, but how we utilize our map. I see a lot of guys talk about idling around and studying maps and doing all that stuff. I study maps like crazy for different reasons, I believe. And we're gonna get in that. Um, so let me break that down so y'all understand what this video is about. Maps in general, if I, if I gave you a map of something and you didn't know what anything was on the map, the map was, is pointless to you. It doesn't lead you anywhere. If you don't understand how to read it, it's not good. A map of a lake is good. It shows you everything, right? It shows you things that are that are there like contours and everything but it doesn't show you fish so one thing it can't show you it doesn't show you fish it doesn't show you anything in the lake as well as in i mean sometimes it has things like rocks or stumps and things like that but it doesn't show you individualized things in the water okay so it just gives you an idea so what i think has happened over the years is it'll show you the point on a map and if you want to fish points it'll show you every point on the map if you want to fish points. We've always been told fish are on points and they are correct. They are on points, right? And then they'll show you drains and you can go fish. You can find all the drains. And guess what? For all these years, we've caught fish in drains. They'll show you creek channel bends. Oh man, that, that elusive creek channel bend shows those because fish get on creek channel bends. It's shown all these things that we have for years fished and caught fish out of. Off of. Problem is, we don't catch fish off points every time. We don't catch fish off creek channels. We don't catch fish out, out of drains. We don't always catch fish that way. There's a thousand other times I catch fish on other stuff. Sometimes I can see it on a map. Sometimes I can't. However, if I'm studying a map before I ever get to a lake, and I've never been there, or or maybe I haven't been fishing for a long time. I don't understand what I'm studying the map for. What, what am I doing? I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. I, where are the fish? Are they on points? Well, I, don't, I still got to go fish a point. I don't think on, on most maps you can sit there and say, oh, that point's going to be better than this point. I fished enough in my lifetime to know that that's not the case. So for me, I don't study maps before I get on the water. I, almost never. Mainly for navigation pur purposes, but not for fish catching. I don't idle around lakes a long time. If I got to a new, new lake, I, I hear guys going, man, I'm, I'm going to go down there and practice that lake and I probably won't fish. I'm just going to idle. I don't know how they do it because that ain't me. What am I idling? Because if I actually went and fish for just a little bit, hopefully I can figure something out. Then I know what to go look for and what to go idle. But if not, I'm just randomly idling out there wasting in my opinion, wasting time. Now, I'm sure there's some guys going, hey, I idled all day long and found something. You know, I, that's different. They're, you're looking for fish. But like I said, with the introduction of LiveScope, and we're going to get into this in the map, fish are a lot more places than what we always thought. Now, this isn't a LiveScope topic. I'm just bringing up the fact that if we never had maps, we wouldn't know where all these things are. Well, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use live scope in the sense of it's shown us that fish are in places that we never thought. Like I said, we're not going to go into the whole live scope thing, but it has shown us that. So if that's the case, that map has gotten bigger. It's not just points, drains, creek channel bends, this, that. It opens it all up. So if it opens it all up, it's very hard to look at a map and say this is where fish should be. So... Let's get into the map. We're going to talk about some things. And then I want you to think about maybe how you should read the map. Now, 
do I look at maps? Man, you know the one map I look at more than any other map ever, times 100, is Raven map. I've been fishing Raven for 20 years, and I look at that map more than I ever have now, because I've fished it so long, because I know where I've caught fish and all these different things, so I'm, I, I look at that map so different than every other map because of my knowledge of Rayburn. And now that I look at that map, I know what I'm looking, I, I'm getting close. I'm like, oh, that might work. As opposed to looking at other maps going, it could work. I mean, it all could work. That's the problem. So, all right, enough of me rambling. Let's get into the map. So let's see if this works. This is basically a map of Rayburn. Right, and we're just gonna kind of talk. I'm just gonna kind of come up over here and start looking at some things. We can go anywhere we want to, right, with this map. And I just want to, I want to, want to bring up like this area, okay? This area is kind of cool because you have the main river channel right there, okay? And and it kind of comes up next to that flat. And so if you wanted to start right there, all these things are the same. And what I mean by that is, is you can come over here and do the same thing. You can, you can find the river channel, right? This is, this is the south end of, of Rayburn. And you can, you can see where the main river channel, this is the other, other channel that goes in there. You can see, see how you have right there, right there, you have the main river channel hitting flats, right? So you got channel bends. And then on this, you're gonna have all kinds of points. So points can be defined differently. That's obviously a point, right? It's a point coming off from a flat. Now, we can also say that this is like a land point, right? I don't really consider land points on Rayburn that big of a deal. And what I mean by that is, is like, I kind of consider points off the flats. So flats underwater, right? This is out of water, guys. This is this is underwater. So so you can tell and and the depth might not be accurate all the time. But that's a point underwater coming out meaning deep water. I'm going to start off like kind of basic for some guys just in case. Just so we get the terminology down. So you have points and there's all kinds of different points, right? You can consider this whole green part a point. And then you can consider that a point, that a point, that a point, right? You can even have points within a drain. That little point, that little point, that little point, that little point. Now, I've seen it where fish get on these giant points, right? And, or the way a lake set up is they're on this entire green part. Whereas you look for something that big, and then I've seen it where you're looking for the most subtle little points, either in a drain or maybe where it hits deep water. Now, the difference is, is sometimes you hit a point that has really deep water next to it, kind of like a channel bend. Now, a lot of times we call channel bends from the actual channel, right? But we actually call channel bends just where deep water really snugs up next to a point. As we come back over here, and come back over here to where I started, where we were going to start from, you have that. You have a main point, right? A, a, a point coming from the bank. You have points coming from the flat. You have this other point. You have this channel bend. Now, that's the main channel again. What we can see in some of these places is like smaller channels. What I mean by smaller channels, you can see smaller channels, ditches that lead up into these flats. Right, right here, right here. They're, they're not the river channel. River channel is way out here. There's somewhat of a creek channel, and but a lot of times they're just drains. They don't have this like defined channel. It's just a drain coming up into a flat, 
right? That is an actual creek channel. You can kind of see the lines, how, how the lines kind of define the creek. And a lot of times you can watch the creek go all the way up in there and actually make a creek on land. But a lot of times they're just drains. Like here, that's just a drain leading up into a flat. Does that make sense? That's a drain. People call them ditches, drains, whatever, but they're not really creek channels. Now we've talked about points, creek channels, drains. We haven't even gotten to the flat. We haven't gotten to what you would call a saddle. See, there's a pretty cool saddle. A saddle is where you have, it doesn't have to be a point, but it's basically two land, land masses underwater. So a flat, if you will, that gets higher here and higher here. And then there's this, there's this, what we call a saddle is this part in the middle where usually two deep parts come from, from either end. And a lot of times that saddle can be high or lower, but you can see how it's connected. It's connected that shallower, deeper part. It's usually shallower to both these higher spots. So it's higher here and higher here. So it does drop down, but it's still higher than the drain than these two deep spots. That's a saddle. Awesome. Saddle, saddles are cool, man. They're very overlooked, right? And, and they don't stand out. You kind of have to like look for them a little bit, right? There's almost one, not really, but you, you can kind of find them. Some of them are, that one was really defined, but a lot of times they're on really long points and like that's almost a saddle right there. It's a little high, it's high. It, it is actually, a, it's a saddle. It's just a very undefined saddle, okay? So you see it? It's higher right there. It's higher right there. It's a little bit lower there. It can be defined as a saddle. Now, you got road beds all through this going in there too. There's so much going on on this small little section. What we've been trained and programmed to do is look at this and go, here's the points, Here's the drain, like here's a road bed, here's the drains. And that's where, that's where we start. And it sounds good. And trust me, this spot right here, there's nothing wrong with this, what I'm about to say. This little kind of island that comes off into the point, like that looks obvious. And let me tell you something, it is. And, and a lot, a lot of fish have been caught right there off that point. The reason a lot of fish have been caught off that point is, is that land right there shows this point when the water gets low. And even if you don't have a map, you could tell that there's a point running out into the lake. Points are good. Points were really good back in the day. And this thing still holds fish. If you come out to Rayburn, you can almost always find someone 50% of the time fishing that point. Chances are, because it has fish on it, but what you're doing is fishing behind a whole bunch of other people fishing the same point. Now, are you telling me that that's the only fish, like all the fish that get in this area, that's the only spot they get is that point? No. You ha would have to fish all this area to find where other fish are. And there are other fish there. And I'm explaining why. Listen, Rayburn's a phenomenal lake. There's almost nowhere on the lake that they don't spawn. That's important. Okay, if you came up on the bank and went any of these creeks, any of these little places, right, that goes up in the land, there are fish everywhere. If you want to go in there in the springtime, you can catch a load of fish everywhere you go on Raven at times, right, when they really push up. When you do that, the reason I want you to think about that is all of a sudden, you could be going, there are a ton of fish on Raven. Like, there's times where you're like, this place has too many fish. It's incredible. I've never seen anything like that. Well, if they all get up in there and you catch them in the springtime, you're not catching them because it's a good time of the year. You're not catching them because they're eating. You're catching them because you're throwing in front of them. And if you look at this map, you're catching them on this point, not because it's a great point. It's because they're, they're on the point. They're on there and you're able to put a lure in front of their face. Problem is, they might be out here at times, here in this drain, cruising around. 
And we, and we for years have thought you better fish and, and there's a reason why, but you better fish on this. See that line that goes right through here. That's the flat and up from that. That's where all the fish are. We had to fish that way without live scope. I'm bringing up live scope. So here's my live scope thing. And it doesn't matter. You, I'm not saying you have to have live scope. I'm just, I'm wanting y'all to think about something. Before live scope, we had to throw up there because we, we needed the bottom to help us catch fish. Does that make sense? We needed a drop off to help us catch fish because that put the fish where we actually knew where we could cast. Live scope has shown us the fish can get all out here. And it makes a lot of sense because when they get up in the springtime, we catch a whole bunch of fish, not because of the time of the year. I'm bringing this up because it's 21 degrees outside right now. And those fish still bite when it's 21. They don't stop eating. I was guilty of this. I thought that, that I didn't catch fish in the cold because they didn't eat as much. Now, I'm not saying that's not necessarily true, but they will eat. They do eat. And you can catch them. You just got to put your bait in front of one. And so when I, when I see people talking about the maps and everything, look, man, I've been fishing a long time. I could have a good guess of where fish should be. But all it is is a guess until I actually go fishing. I want to get a bite. If I get a bite on that point, then maybe I go hit other points like that. Maybe I see this roadbed and fish around this roadbed. Maybe I fish the roadbed on, on top of the high spots. Maybe I look for it entering into drains. Maybe they're in this little thing. Maybe they're on this little point. Maybe they're right in the middle of the drains. Maybe they're out here cruising around. So when we look at maps, I want you all to think of it as in they're there. They're a useful tool only if you know what you're looking at. And you can know everything on the map. That's not what I'm saying. You can know what a flat looks like, a drain, a saddle, a channel bend. You can know that stuff. But if you don't know where the fish relates to, to those places on a map, your map's worthless. Right? It's like having, it's like not having a key to a map, right? You have to have a key to a map to understand what everything is. If there's no fish there, right? If you're not catching fish and you don't know if yeah, it's great that you know where the point was, but there's no fish there, right? So I just want y'all to keep that in mind is that when, when I study a map, it's more or less, I study maps way more after I've fished a place than when I actually get there. When I get there, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the map a little bit, but I'm really, I'm going to test everything out in the map. I'm going to test it all out. I don't need to drive around the entire lake looking at a map to see find me 100 points. Because if they're not on points, that whole time I, I drove around looking for points, I just wasted that because they're not on points. They're on something else. So I definitely want to find something that they're on first. And even then, even if I find it, I don't want to just be keyed in on that one thing because I've learned now, chances are, and I've fished enough tournaments, that just because you figured out something doesn't mean 100 guys didn't figure out something else. So my suggestion is do more fishing, less idling and less worrying about the map. Just try to catch fish. Just just fish it all. And what I mean by fish it all is like, don't get so I need to fish here and here and here. Look, kind of fish a lot of things. Get an idea. Then you can look at a map and go, hey, man, I, I need to look for this now. I need to look for that. That's when I study a map, not beforehand. Catch fish, then study the map. I think it's the biggest, I think it's the number one thing when I see people looking at maps and wanting, I think that's the one thing they're missing. Okay, now the net navigational side, study your map. Study your map on the navigational side, right? I, I mean, I, I, I kind of can, can look at the lake and stuff, but I, I kind of want to know how to run it too. But other than that, for the fishing side, Catch some fish first, then start looking at the map. There's times like I'll get done fishing for 10 hours and get home and come look at a map for like 30 minutes. Look at what I where I caught fish, what I did. This is a lake that I fish all the time. And I've looked at that map 100 times, but every time I catch fish, I look at the map differently now. I'm like, oh, 
that makes sense. Or, like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Or, or I'm like, okay, well, if it makes sense here, can it make sense over here? I've never tried it over here. That's the kind of stuff I look for. Just a, this is my map. This is a map video. I've been, been wanting to kind of do this, but I didn't know how to show you all the map at the same time. But that is, hopefully that'll help you all guys out. So there you go. You got it. Go study your map after you catch a fish. See y'all.